Yes, this place is older than you. <sighs> of course, it's older than all robots. We're in the Dominican Republic, specifically Santo Domingo, one of the oldest cities in the Americas. We're in Latin America to restore the memories of Ana Martinez, our second writer whose memories the silencers stole. During our research, we discovered that Ana has an interest in revolutionaries. In fact, she was planning a novel about the political history of this area. Because of that, for this brief, we'll focus on Latin American political literature. But what exactly is political literature? Take a look at the two words that make up this term. You can probably infer that political literature refers to written works that explore how politics and governments shape a country. To restore our writers' memories, we'll describe key characteristics of Latin American political literature. We'll also explain the relationship between political movements and literature in Latin America. Ready to restore some memories? Let's go! Latin America is home to 20 countries and hundreds of different cultures. Last week, we discussed Africa, which is also home to many diverse cultures and countries. However, African nations are grouped together because they're in one continent, but Latin America isn't. So why are these countries grouped together? The answer involves history and language. Latin America is a geographic and cultural region consisting of countries in North, South, and Central America and the Caribbean that are united by a shared cultural heritage and languages. Each of these places has unique indigenous or native cultures. However, they're united because they were all colonized by European nations, primarily Portugal and Spain. Due to this, Latin American cultures are a blend of indigenous, European, and African influences, and most Latin American countries speak primarily Spanish or Portuguese. What do you remember about colonialism and how it affected Africa? Given that, what can you infer about how colonialism affected Latin America? Pause to brainstorm in your PDF, resume when ready. Like in Africa, the colonial period in Latin America was defined by European powers taking control and attempting to replace indigenous culture and traditions with European ones. Also, like in Africa, the colonial period in Latin America ended after a long struggle for independence. However, there were some key differences between the colonial periods in Latin America and Africa. Latin American countries had been European colonies since the 15th and 16th centuries, several hundred years before their independence movements began, much longer than most African nations. Many Europeans had settled in the region during this time, and the Spanish and Portuguese cultures were ingrained in the traditions of most Latin American groups. Additionally, most Latin American countries fought for their independence in the early 1800s, about a century before the independence movements in Africa. These independence movements came during a time when many colonies across the globe were also fighting for independence, and new ideas about rights and liberty were popular. That brings us to Latin American independence movement literature. Based on its name, what do you think independence movement literature is? You can probably infer that these are writings produced during the time period when Latin American nations were seeking independence from colonial powers. Some topics in Latin American independence literature are similar to those in African colonial literature. These include the consequences of colonial rule, resistance against colonialism, and issues of culture, identity, and politics. However, Latin American independence literature is unique in many ways. For example, the writings were mostly persuasive in nature. We know that persuasive nonfiction is intended to convince the audience to think or do something. 
What do you think Latin American writers wanted to persuade their audiences to do or think? Pause to jot your thoughts. Resume when ready. During the Latin American independence movements, revolutionaries like José Martí and Simón Bolívar wrote arguments in support of a unique Latin American identity that combined elements of European, African, and indigenous cultures. They also argued for independence using the ideas of freedom, liberty, and self-government that were popular at the time. Most of these writings were persuasive nonfiction, but some were in other genres, such as poetry. Most Latin American countries gained independence from their colonizers by the mid-1800s. However, the march toward true freedom was complicated. Gaining independence meant that these countries needed to form their own governments. The challenges of that process led to our second category of political writing, anti-totalitarian literature. Welcome to the National Palace of the Dominican Republic, a building that has seen this country through many major historical events. As we discussed last week, the end of colonialism doesn't mean the end of a nation's challenges. Instead, the newly independent country faces the difficult process of creating its own unified government. Imagine you live in a country that has experienced a lot of uncertainty over the years. Your new government is still trying to figure out the best way to govern. There are often disagreements, unexpected changes, and uncertainty among the people about who to trust or what will happen next. One day, a leader emerges, claiming he will bring stability to the government and make your country powerful and strong. Many people support him, sharing news of all the great things he's done. Over time, though, the leader begins to exert more control over the population. You're not allowed to speak badly about him, or you might be thrown in jail. They stop holding elections, or the elections they have are fake, and the leader cheats to make sure he wins. They have complete and total control over every aspect of your country and your life. This is called totalitarianism, a form of government where all of the power is held by one person or group who controls nearly every aspect of public and private life. During the 20th century, many totalitarian regimes, or governments, rose and fell across Latin America, influencing its literature. A large amount of literature written during this time was anti-totalitarian literature. Pause the video here and write what you think anti-totalitarian literature is in your PDF. Resume when ready. As you may have inferred, anti-totalitarian literature refers to written works that criticize or challenge totalitarian regimes. Activists of this time period, such as Rodolfo Walsh and Che Guevara, wrote nonfiction works critiquing totalitarian regimes. But fiction also played a key role in anti-totalitarian literature. What kinds of topics do you think were common in fictional anti-totalitarian literature? Let's take a look. Pause the video here and read the summaries in your PDF. Then write down any common topics or characteristics you notice. Resume when ready. You probably noticed that all three stories explore themes of greed, corruption, and abuse of power. Additionally, authors like Carlos Fuentes and Gabriel García Márquez criticized totalitarian regimes. In particular, they explored their abuse of power and frequent human rights violations. In addition, they also inspired resistance and hope, encouraging people to fight back against totalitarian regimes and forge their own identities and cultures in a new free world. During the mid-20th century, many Latin American countries fought back against and overthrew totalitarian regimes, installing more fair governments in their place. Today, Latin American literature both explores the continued impact of this time period and tackles other modern issues. Let's discuss our next steps, where you'll learn more about contemporary Latin American literature.
Me is getting Ana Martinez's brief started, but we need your help. We've learned about political literature in Latin America in general. Now, you'll use your PDF to learn more about Dominican Republic political literature specifically and finish our second brief. Our philosophy is to always keep learning. So once you're done, meet us at our next location. Until then, remember, every story is a new horizon. See you next time. Hey.